Let us discuss, how does a transistor work? Before going to the actual topic, let us review the concept of forward and reverse biased PN junction. Here, we connect the positive terminal of a DC source with the P-type side of the junction. We connect the negative terminal of that DC source with the N-type side of the junction. Adjacent to this junction edge, free electrons in the N-type material will recombine with holes in the P-type material. After absorption of free electrons in N-type side of indepletion region, uncovered positive donor ions will remain there. After absorption of holes in P-type side of indepletion region, uncovered negative acceptor ions will remain there. The current through the junction can only start flowing in the forward direction, when we apply a DC voltage, more than forward barrier potential. We know that, forward barrier potential of a silicon PN junction is 0.7 volt. So, we have to apply forward voltage more than 0.7 volts in the case of silicon PN junction. This condition we call, the forward biased condition of the PN junction. Now, we come to the reverse biased condition. Here, we connect the positive terminal of a DC source with the N-type side of the junction. We connect the negative terminal of that DC source with the P-type side of the junction. Here, due to the attraction of positive potential of the source, the free electrons in the N-type side will shift away from the junction, leaving positive ions there in the junction. In the same way, due to the attraction of negative potential of the source, the holes in the P-type side will shift away from the junction leaving negative ions there in the junction. As a result, the width of the depletion region will increase significantly. Ideally, there is no more current flowing through the junction in the direction of applied voltage. This condition we call, reverse biased condition of the PN junction. But here, one interesting thing happens. We know that, there are always some holes, present in the N-type side of the junction as minority charge carriers. Also, there are always few free electrons, present in the P-type side of the junction as minority charge carriers. Due to electrostatic force of applied reverse voltage, the holes in the N-type side, and free electrons in the P-type side will cross the junction easily. This is because, the barrier potential of reverse bias depletion region cannot abstract the flow of free electrons from P-type side to N-type side, and holes from N-type side to P-type side. This causes, a tiny current to flow through the PN junction even in reverse biased condition. We have discussed here this phenomenon, of reverse biased PN junction, because it is quite essential for explaining, basic working principle of a bipolar junction transistor. Now, we will try to construct a semiconductor transistor. There are two types of semiconductor transistor. These are NPN transistor, and PNP transistor. For shake of understanding, we will draw an NPN transistor. There are two N-type regions, and one P-type region in between them. One N-type region is highly doped. The size of this region is moderate. We call this region as emitter. The middle P-type region is lightly doped. We make this region very narrow. We call this region as base. Other N-type region is moderately doped. The size of this region is largest among all regions. We call this region as collector. Now. Let us first connect the positive terminal of a DC voltage source to the collector and negative terminal of same voltage source to the emitter. In this situation, the PN junction between collector and base becomes reverse biased. 
The PN junction between base and emitter is forward biased. Let us consider the voltage applied between collector and emitter is VCE and the voltage drop between reverse biased collector base junction is VCB. The voltage drop across the forward biased base emitter junction is VBE. At this situation, the voltage VBE is fixed, and it equals to forward bias voltage of PN junction. If we consider it a silicon transistor, the forward bias voltage of PN junction would be 0.7 volt. Thus, VCE equals to VCB plus VBE which implies VCE equals to VCB plus 0.7 volt. That equation indicates the entire applied voltage between collector and emitter except 0.7 volt drops across the reverse bias collector base junction. So, whatever may be the applied voltage between collector and emitter, there would always be a potential barrier of 0.7 volt between emitter and base. Because of that, no free electron can cross the base emitter junction for any applied collector emitter voltage. So no current can flow through the transistor. Now, we connect the negative terminal of the collector emitter voltage source to the negative terminal of another smaller DC voltage source. We connect the positive terminal of this second voltage source to the base region. After that the total scenario will change. If we increase the voltage between base and emitter from zero, after reaching the base emitter voltage just above 0.7 volt, the free electrons start crossing the junction from emitter to base region. As we told earlier, the emitter is highly doped. The number of free electrons available in this zone is quite huge. So a large number such free electrons cross the junction and appear in base region. But, the base is very lightly doped, so the number holes available in this region is quite low. So, maximum free electrons come to this region do not find hole to recombine. Only few, about 2% to 5% of the free electrons recombine with available holes there. These electron hole recombinations contribute to the base current, which circulates through base, emitter, and voltage source. Rest, 98% to 95% of free electrons cross the collector base junction due to their kinetic energy gained from electrostatic force of base emitter voltage. The excess free electrons in the base region can easily cross the reverse bias collector base junction. Because, these free electrons appear as minority carrier in the base region, and the reverse bias collector base junction does not oppose the flow of these electrons to collector region. Now, if we increase the base emitter voltage slightly, the number of free electrons cross the junction is also proportionately increased. The base current is still 2% to 5% of the total current. Here, we see that total electrons enter into emitter from source then base from emitter, are diverted into two paths. Very few of them are combined with holes in the base region and contribute base current. Maximum of them cross the base collector junction and contribute collector current. So, emitter current is the sum of base current and collector current. The ratio of collector current to base current is known as current gain in common emitter mode and it is denoted as beta. Therefore, B2 equals to IC divided by IB. This was the basic concept of a transistor. Hope you got the idea. Thank you.